warfare in New Guinea. Americans and Australians blasting the Japs in the campaign to take Buna. From the turret of an American tank, our cameraman brings a dramatic record of war as it is fought in this wild jungle country. Cautiously, troops advance against an unseen foe. For a month, they've pushed forward across the Owen Stanley Mountains, routing the Japs from foxholes and pillboxes concealed in the jungle, firing, blasting at every moving leaf. Objective at last. Buna mission is won. Southeastern New Guinea was an important Jap stronghold in the South Pacific. From here, they planned the invasion of Australia. Now, their equipment, their bases, are in allied hands. For General Douglas MacArthur, it is a victory of major importance. Taking terrific toll of the enemy, Australians and Americans met the Japs on even terms and hurled the enemy back into the sea. The streets of the capital are thronged as Santiago hears the news that Chile has severed relations with the Axis. The United Nations have reassured this important South American Republic that they can and will help her protect her 3,000 miles of coastline. Flags of all the Allies are in evidence as Santiago reflects the sentiments of Chile's five million people. From the palace, President Rios looks upon a cheering populace, hailing Chile's defiance of the Axis. waters of Canada's British Columbia, the fishing fleet makes the biggest haul in 16 years. Millions of herring, 500 tons in this one catch alone. Norwegians have taken over the job formerly done by the Japanese and they're bringing in enough fish in one day to fill 80 railway freight cars. Every pound will be packed and canned for United Nations soldiers overseas. A welcome wartime catch. Sports take the spotlight in New York's huge Madison Square Garden as 16,000 enthusiasts turn out to see national collegiate champions set new records for speed. Here's Warmerdam, world's champion pole vaulter. Tonight, the Californian is aiming for better than 15 feet. And he clears the bar with inches to spare, a new mark for an indoor meet. The climax of the evening is the mile race. Stars are entered from leading American universities. New York University's Frank Dixon is setting the pace. Time around, three men are left. Dodds, the national champion, is now in front. Trailing up to this point, Earl Mitchell is overtaking the leaders. Sprinting to the front with a magnificent burst of power, Mitchell steps out to win by four yards. Time, four minutes, eight and six ten seconds.
United States man of war makes a trial run before joining the fleet. 41,000 tons of fighting ship, she's the fastest, most powerful battleship afloat. The bugle sounds general quarters, and 2,000 trained men go to battle stations to test the big guns. Powerful 16-inch rifles swing towards the target. Observers, hooded and dressed for below zero cold, are at their posts. America's greatest, the mightiest dreadnought ever built, is going into action. miles northwest of Darwin, Australia, the Pacific island of Timor has been held by the Japanese for nearly a year. But behind enemy lines, deep in the interior, a force of Australians have held out against all efforts of the Japs to locate and dislodge them. For months, Jap planes sought their hideouts. And while Australia gave them up for lost, the men assembled a radio set from bits and pieces stolen in raids on the enemy. Finally, they hammered through their message to Darwin. SOS, Timor to Australia, Timor to Australia. And the message flashed across the Timor Sea is heard in Darwin. On the mainland, officers suspect a Jap trick. No white men are supposed to be alive on Timor. Darwin radios the cautious question. What is the Christian name of Jack Sargent's wife? Answer immediately. And the men on Timor flashed the answer, Joan. In this way, Australia was satisfied. Secretly, food, clothing, and ammunition were rushed to the beleaguered Australians on their 7,000 square mile outpost. Letters from home for men long given up for lost. With fresh supplies and friendly native help, the Australians launch an attack on Japanese-occupied territory. Moving up over mountains, through jungles, they take the enemy by complete surprise. congratulates his men. Hardy, rugged fighters, they've won every skirmish against the Japs, and they're staying right there to carry on the fight. No longer a lost battalion, the men of Timor are living symbols of the United Nations' determination to smash the Japs. Mm -hmm. 